uh, five horror remakes that we didn't need. I, I came across this while putting this show together. I just want to run through it real quick, like, um, and talk about some of these. You know what I'm saying? Because we are still in the 31 Days of Horror. That's right. Still in 31 Days of Horror. So I want to talk about a, a couple of these. And this is from Fandom Wire. Like I said, I just found this um, when while making it. So let's go through them. It's just going to be real quick. I'll tell you if I agree or if I don't agree. I think it's only like five of them. So um, horrible reboots that they say we didn't need. The Nightmare on Elm Street, the 2010 version. Uh, their explanation is there are several things you might think about when you think of Nightmare on Elm Street films. The gloved hand, the iconic red and green jumper, his scar face, and of course the man, the legend himself, Robert England. True indeed. But by the time this reboot came out, England considered himself too old to continue playing that part and pass it on. The responsibility fell to Jackie Early. Jackie Earl Haley of Rorschach fame. The reboot tried to walk the fine line of reinventing itself while trying to be different enough from the source material to warrant its creation and end up being too different from the original and not good enough on its own right. I 100% agree. We did not need any of this garbage. This was trash, man. This was horrible. This was this was just bad. Look at this. This is that ain't Fred. That ain't Fred Cougar, man. You can't. My thing is. I don't even know. And I know I was just talking about recasting to child. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? You have to find somebody who's got that charisma that, that has that, that can pass that juice on. I'm not saying you can't recast. I'm not saying you can't, but you have to find that Robert England because he made Fred who it was, right? So you have to find somebody who wants to do the same thing. You know what I'm saying? Uh, so keep it pushing. Friday the 13th, the 2009 version. Uh, their explanation is the original Friday the 13th films weren't exactly Oscar worthy with the basic premise being an extremely annoyed Jason running around and murdering his way through some unsuspecting and usually undeserving victims before being vanquished, kind of. Somehow the reboot managed to mess that up, making mistake after mistake and ruining the character even more than Jason X did. And the time when horror reboots are the end thing, there's still no new noise about whether another Jason film will come to uh, come about and it's largely because of this attempt. I have to disagree. This 2009 Friday the 13th version was dope. This was like Stalker Jason in the woods just handling business. I don't know what movie he watched. I watched a good Friday the 13th movie. I was waiting on a sequel. I wanted a sequel. Did you see Jason pull up the, the bow and arrow Rambo style and take dude out like half a month? Come on, man. He was showing all his Boy Scout skills in this movie. You know what I'm saying? Everything that he learned from the camp, he showed it. You know what I'm saying? I thought this was dope. Him crawling, you know what I'm saying? Like, another thing, too, people always wondered how Jason got around so fast. They came up with the perfect explanation. He got tunnels up under the, the camp. If it's a, a tunnel system underneath the camp, that's how he was able to just be from, you know what I'm saying? Seem like he was at two places at once because he could move fast up under it with, with those tunnels and stuff. So I thought it was dope, man. So I do not agree. Uh, give me more Jason and Jason X was dope too. That was when I hear Jason X, I think of like Jason Ninja, uh, you know what I'm saying, with superpowers and shit. That was dope. Fuck that. Next up, Halloween 2007 version. I think this is the Rob Zombie. Yeah, at this point, we sat through multiple different iterations of the Nefarious Mask Killer. However, it's almost inarguable that this is the worst version. Resurrected by Rob Zombie, the horror reboot tried its best to introduce new and exciting concepts to Michael and the surrounding world. The biggest being more fleshed out childhood, first-hand experience of what happened to make him the way he ended up, but this was met with large-scale pushback from fans who felt the humanizing Michael took away the terrifying aspect of his character. They weren't wrong, or let's not even mention Abomination that was this film sequel. Um, I'm 50-50 with this because I don't know if they've seen what just came out <laughs> this past week, week and a half ago. So I go 50-50. I thought it was, I, I, I enjoyed looking at like the the him growing up and stuff like that i thought that was was cool um i was cool on the on on the sequel we didn't need the sequel um but it's rob zombie and i thought rob zombie was trying to infuse something and if it didn't work with the fans it didn't work with the fans i totally 100 percent understand um but i'm on the fence with this i'm on the fence with this carrie 2013 uh this stars chloe grace moretz is the titular character Carrie, the film follows largely the same idea as first, but as any unwanted horror reboot to forgets what exactly made the original not only so good, but what made it considered one of the most watched Stephen King films. 
There's numerous reasons why this didn't work, be it the lackluster direction, poor performances, or the fact it just was unnerving or scary at all. This is a horror reboot that was not only unneeded, but may have well been so bad that we may not have to sit through another botch remake anytime soon. Um, this was just to me damn near line for line. A couple of these remote re reboots were just line for line, taken from the original, put a new coat of paint on the call of the day. Um, but no, it wasn't scary because we've seen this already. Um, it's hard. Horror has a hard time of doing things, especially with reboots, right? Oh, because it's hard to retell that story again when it's not scary. Carrie 2013 was not scary, right? You know what I'm saying? It wasn't scary because we saw it already. Plus it was just as, as gory, you know what I'm saying? They tried to make it like the original was just, to me, was too pretty of a film. So nah. Uh, Old oh boy 2015. I do not. I saw this. I don't know why this on here. Uh, their explanation is we're pushing the limits of the definition of horror movie here. But the original old boy by Park Chan Wook is a Korean cult classic with the horrifying story playing out bit by bit, drawing the audience in as Daisu tries to unravel the question which he already has answers to. Even the gorious, most disgusting films out there will struggle to shock and disgust you in the same way as this. The 2015 American remake strips away all the nuanced mystery and genuine horror from the story, turning to just another American stylized, less substance version of a truly fantastic film. If you're ever given an opportunity to be between which one to watch, watch the original. I can agree with this. I can agree with this. It, this was just more of the star power. You had Josh Brolin, Samuel L. Jackson. Um, I forgot who else. I watched it like one time. No need for a rewatch. But, you know, I, I agree with this. So, yeah, we, we didn't need that one. Uh, so that was five horror remakes that we didn't need. Um, I agree with two on the fence with one. And disagree with the other two so what was it two yeah so there we go boom boom is what it is let's keep it moving let's keep it moving